Hello everyone, uh, this is a video about a woodworking project uh, to convert a classical guitar into what's called a terz guitar. Um, I should note this is a video to accompany the Instructable. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I'll note right off the bat that this uh, project is not probably going to be something that most people are going to want to do. If you fall into the very small Venn diagram of people who both want a terz guitar, who know what a terz guitar is, who are able to do this kind of woodworking on instruments um, and have the inclination to do so, uh, you might be interested. But otherwise, I'm basically putting this out as an introduction uh, just for people who might be interested in seeing of the project. So if you're thinking of making a comment that this is a stupid project and you would never do it, uh, please don't feel the need to do so. I'll also note that I'm not a professional video editor, as you'll definitely see during the course of the video. So a Terrence guitar is like a smaller kind of guitar um, that has a higher range. Um, it's basically the same notes as if you put a capo at the third fret of a guitar, um, which is how it came to be called the Terrence guitar, which means, I believe, third. Um, and it was a kind of popular instrument in like the 19th century. There's a lot of music written for duets of a terz guitar and a regular guitar, but you don't see them for sale very much these days. Um, I'd wanted one for a while to try to play some d guitar duet music, um, but I hadn't found one uh, for sale. So I decided that I would get an old classical guitar and try to see if I could hack it into a terz guitar. Um, as a sort of experiment, and then also, and hopefully at the end, I would have a Terrence guitar. The first step, of course, was to get the old classical guitar. Um, I found this one on an online auction. Um, it was around 20 to $25 uh, US, um, and then the shipping was about the same, so it was uh, maybe around $50 total. It came with a case, uh, but it was being sold as unplayable, and they said it was actually said they were selling it as junk. Uh, so I didn't feel too bad about um, using this as a sort of experiment. I would have felt bad, you know, if this was an important instrument or if I felt that a craftsman had spent a lot of, you know, effort working on it um, and I was disrespecting their work. Uh, but since this was already sort of maybe going towards the junkyard anyway, um, I thought it didn't feel too bad about um, ruining it. According to this label, it's a model called Ukyo by Kazuo Hashimoto. Um, and he was active working making guitars in Japan um, in the 1950s and 1960s. This is probably from the 60s. And there's quite a lot of damage uh, to the finish. Uh, there's a lot of grime on the fretboard. The frets are old and kind of nasty. Uh, dings and things to the headstock. And uh, uh, one of the tuners was broken completely. There's a lot of damage to the back of the neck here. Um, and then more damage uh, to the back um, and the finish all over. But structurally, it was actually in pretty good shape. There's no major cracks or that kind of thing. Um, it's got a solid top um, and laminate back and sides. Um, and I think in its time, it was a pretty good guitar. Um, not, not you know, the best in the world, but but a decent guitar. So it was a good good one to start with as a for a project like this because then you could end up with a pretty good guitar at the end, hopefully. The first thing to do was, of course, a lot of planning and measuring um, and drawing and sort of figuring out exactly what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. And then I could start to cut away at the body. Um, the point here is to cut down the body so that the body and neck joint will meet at what's going to be the new 12th fret, um, which on the, the old guitar is the 15th fret. So I cut away those upper bout sections on both sides of the neck there, and then I was able to remove the two sections um, from there. And this also gives you access to the inside of the guitar, so then you can start to do the structural stuff inside that needs to be done in there. And I also removed the tuners, um, the broken old broken ones, uh, that are going to be replaced, um, and got it ready to be worked on. The next big thing of, was to uh, cut off the end of the neck. Um, this is very nerve-wracking and it feels really bad to cut into a guitar like this. 
um, but I had to cut off the neck at the third fret and then also cut off the headstock from the remaining bit of the neck um, because the headstock is going to be reattached where the neck was cut off. Then with the neck now shorter, it was a little easier to start working on the structure of the guitar. The first thing is to start working on the extension of the fretboard. So I did that by cutting that off uh, straight there at that mini fret. And then I attached this uh, piece of wood there under the sound hole. I did that by gluing it on the bottom of the front and then also to the um, rib that's inside there. Um, it's a bit hard to see. But I also strengthened it with uh, so a little metal bracket. Um, this is one of the few places where metal's used in the instrument, but uh, I, I felt it was needed for, the, for a little more strength on that joint because that's going to be pushed down uh, through, this, uh, through the fretboard extension. And I used bits of the fretboard that I had cut off from the first to third frets um, to put the frets, uh, fretboard on to make this little extension. Next, I needed a heel block inside the guitar. Um, so I just glued a block um, of wood right there inside. And then since that area was secured, now I was able to cut off the rest of the old wood that had been the heap before, both the inside and the outside. Um, that's what it looked like, um, and also the the heel. I'm going to keep that heel to use on the old guitar, um, and so now I'm ready to start working on putting it sort of back together. Uh, this is what it looks like now, and I just cleaned up that area because uh, a new block is going to go in there for the heel. Next is going to be to put on some some wood there on the those big holes that I cut in it. Um, so in, to increase the gluing area, um, I used these little uh, sort of shims and then also worked on making some what are called dentalones, these little pieces of wood uh, that you glue along the side uh, to make sure that there's a bigger gluing area than just that little uh, edge bit. So you can see I glued those along all the curved edges and um, used the shims on the flat edges and then made it all flat for a good gluing surface. And gluing the sides took both hands, so I don't really have video, but uh, I just uh, bent some wood over those uh, curved surfaces and, and glued it down. And then I routed out the edges with my router. This is the only power tool I think I used in the whole project. Um, and then I, I installed the bindings along the edges there. I found some bamboo strips that actually worked well for the binding. Uh, they're nice and hard, but they also bent easily along the edges. And next I needed to start making the new heel, so I uh, glued in that block of wood there, and that's going to be the, the top of the heel, I guess. And I glued the rest of the heel that I had cut off before um, on top of that. Um, and then I had to carve it all, all of that, including the neck, uh, to make it a nice smooth shape because um, that's going to be the heel of the new guitar. And here's the heel uh, in its basically finished form, um, all carved and, and smoothed down a little bit um, with sandpaper and so on. This next bit, I don't really know if this was necessary, but uh, I was worried about the strength of the joint right there. Um, so I ended up uh, cutting out a little bit and sinking some wood screws in there so that uh, there's two wood screws now sunk um, that are adding strength, hopefully, to that uh, joint right there. And then I had to fill in uh, that, la that bit that I had cut out there. I used some of the old neck that I had previously cut off um, for that. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know if that was the right decision, but um, I think it'll make it a little stronger and give me some peace of mind. And of course, then I had to smooth that all down. It doesn't look as pretty as I would have liked, but it's okay. So next, what I was kind of most worried about in the whole project, which is reattaching the headstock um, at what was previously the third fret. I found a thing online recommending to use threaded rod and epoxy for this kind of end-to-end -end joint. Uh, so I tried that. It's supposed to make a very strong joint, um, reinforced with metal. Uh, it was hard to get everything lined up correctly, um, and it was very nerve-wracking to uh, to do it um, when the epoxy was saying, and I had to hold everything in place. Um, but somehow I managed to get it so it's pretty much straight. It's a tiny bit off, but it's uh, good enough to play. 
Now the whole thing is pretty much together and then I'm down to scraping the top and refinishing and uh, trying to make it look nice um, and then also try to make it playable. Um, I re did a complete refret. Um, I finished the top. I touched up the finish on the back and sides where it needed it. Um, I stripped the call it the old finish off the neck and put a new finish on that. Um, I used brush on varnish, which I know uh, most luthiers would uh, get angry at me for using that, um, but I'm not good at finishing, um, and I just wanted to um, get this done uh, as it was a kind of an experimental piece anyway. And so here's the final thing. Um, it turned out, I think, pretty well. Um, I think there's some things I'd do differently if I tried again. Uh, I'd like to get things more sort of perfectly accurate and precise. Um, but, you know, it was the first time I've done this, or possibly anyone's ever done this, um, and uh, it turned into a playable instrument, um, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm going to try to uh, put some music of me playing the guitar um, at the end of the video uh, so you can get a sense of what it sounds like. Again, I don't know that this is a project anyone else would really want to do, um, but I enjoyed doing it, and maybe someone somewhere will get some sort of... Uh, inspiration to do something um, from watching this and uh, thanks for watching.